Right. You came to the right place. <laughs> no, I'm serious, you did. You don't know that, but you did. I, I'm telling you, Pastor. This word is going to change your life. Amen. It's going to impact your life. Amen. You're not going to be the same anymore. Amen. 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 But this morning, I want to share something that, uh, that the Lord placed in my heart to share with all of you. Amen. You know that song that we were singing, I Give Myself Away? You know, there's so much meaning to that song, and sometimes we just sing it as a song because we're singing it, and it's part of praise and worship, right? Amen. But you really, you got to really take it to heart and to hear what the Spirit of God is saying, Amen. even as we're praising God, even as we're worshiping God. Yes. And, and I had forgotten that we were going to sing that song, but it goes together with what I'm about to share with all of you. Amen. And I want to say something to all of you. That when Christ went up to the cross, He went up to the cross for a purpose and a reason, and He had passion to go to the cross. Yes. But He did it. He did it all for each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord. And for those who have gone home to be with the Lord, and those who are still here, and there's more to come. Amen. Amen. But there's a purpose and a reason for the cross, and the crucifixion, and the Calvary. And his ascension, his birth, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And sometimes, people, we have to die to self. No, we have to die to self. And sometimes we have to let go of self and our ways and our attitudes and our conduct. Amen? Because that's not the Christ that's supposed to be in us. When you gave yourself away to God, you gave yourself away to God completely. You surrender to God. You raised up that white flag and he says, yes, Lord, here I am. Amen. Amen. So I want to share something about what does it really mean to die to self. Amen. I mean to really, really give it all up. Give it up and let go and let God. Amen. Amen. Let go and let God and see what God does. Amen. Amen. So let me read a couple of things to you guys. He says, when you are forgotten or neglected, and you don't hurt with the insult, but have, but your heart is happy. That is dying to self. Amen. Amen. When your advice is disregarded, and your opinions are ridiculed, and you refuse to let anger rise up in your heart, and you take it all in with patience, with love, and joy, and peace, and silence, that is dying to self. When you lovingly and wait patiently and bear disorder, irre irregularities, <coughs> tardiness, and annoyance, and endure it as Jesus endured it, that is dying to self. When you ever care to refer to yourself in conversation or record your own good works, or itch for a praise after an accomplishment, and when you can truly love to be unknown, that is dying to self. When you see your brother or your sister prosper, and can honestly rejoice with him or her, and feel that there is no envy, there is no jealousy, even though your needs are greater, that is dying to self. When you are content with any food or any offering or any climate or any part of society, that is dying to self. When you can take correction There is quiet in this. <laughs> Amen. Amen. When you can take correction and when you can humbly submit inwardly as well as outwardly to those who are in authority with no rebellion or resentment or raising or rising up with anger or pride or jealousy within your heart, that is dying to self. Amen. 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 
So see, there comes a time and a place that when all of us came to Christ, we all came to Christ because He called us into His kingdom. Yes, Lord. But see, there's a lot of people in the body of Christ that are still holding on to self. Mm -hmm. They're still holding on to the yesterdays and all the hurt and all the pain. Amen? Amen. We need to die to self, people. Jesus gave it all up on the cross. This is why he told us through his word, and a lot of people don't catch on this. It is finished. No, it is finished. Yes, thank you, Lord. Everything that you've been through, all the, all the negative things, the, the offenses that people still carry with them. People don't like to be corrected. People don't like to be rebuked, but they sure love the exhortation. Amen. Amen. And people can stand. People can sit and say, if you see me doing something wrong, you have the right to correct me. You have the right to rebuke me. You have the right to do anything and everything because I know the Christ that is in me. Amen. Amen. So are you truly dying to self? See, because when you came into this place, you didn't come here by coincidence. God brought you to this place. No, God brought you to this Amen. place. Amen. Amen. So there could be some correction in your life. Yes. Amen? Amen? Seriously, people, because I, 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 I can see faces right now that people has, that God has corrected. Amen? And you're going to be continue to be correct. There's nothing wrong with correction. You just got to know how to receive correction. Because you may not see what we see. No, you may not see what we see. But we see more than what you think we see. Amen. Amen. God has given us certain discernment to see the people that God has brought into this place. Amen. And there's a lot of people that don't like to receive correction. But if you're willing to be a true servant of God, to serve Him, you're going to go along with the correction. You're going to go along with rebuke. Because maybe God is trying to do something in your life to change your ways. Amen? Amen. So are you willing to give yourself away? I know that I am. Yeah. Amen? Because I've been corrected many times before I became a pastor. I didn't take offense to it. You know what it was for? In order for God to correct me. So I wouldn't make that same mistake again. Amen? Amen. And I'm talking about our walk with God and with each other. Amen? Amen. But I needed to share that with all of you. Because it is so important, people, that from time to time, not only from time to time, that sometimes, not only do we have to check ourselves from the neck up, but it starts here, people. Right. It starts within your heart. This is where it all begins. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. 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 That's all I needed to say. No, the service ain't over yet. <laughs> Amen. But I do want all of you to turn over to the book of Exodus. I am going to continue and I hope I uh, end with the series that I've been on, on the favor of God. How many people walk, want to walk in the favor of God, people? Seriously. Not only His favor, but His grace, people. Amen. We don't even deserve to walk in the favor of God. But He is so merciful because of His mercies. He has poured out His grace and His favor upon us. And sometimes we take the grace of God for granted, and we shouldn't. Amen? Amen? We should count our blessings every single day. The Word of God says in the book of James, count your blessings. Think about what God has blessed you with, and what He wants to bless you with even more so. Amen? But I thank God for what He's doing. Amen? In the book of Exodus chapter 33, I'm going to open up with my foundational scripture. Amen? Exodus 33, starting in verse 12. Then Moses said to the Lord, See, you say to me, Bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name, and I have also found grace in my sight. Amen. Now therefore I pray, if I have found faith, this is Moses talking. Now therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and
and that I may find grace in your sight, and consider this nation, for these are your people. Amen. And this is Moses having a conversation with God, because God is about to pour his grace and his favor upon Moses, and Moses has no clue about what God is about to do with him and through him, people. Amen. But I can tell you this much. Amen. I can tell you this much as a personal experience. I know what the favor of God is. I know what His grace is. And I know where He has brought us from and where we're at and where He's taking us. Amen. And as long as I keep my eyes on the Lord, as long as I continue to walk in His will and His ways, amen, I may fall, I may stumble, I may look to the left or to the right, but I'm going to get up and continue to walk my walk with God, people. Because I know that there's something at the end that God has in store for us. Amen. And I'm speaking in behalf of this ministry. Amen. I'm not going to let anybody or anyone distract me from what God has called me to do. I know that I have a personal calling from God to heed to His Word, but so do you guys. You guys have a personal calling in your lives. And you've got to continue to heed to the word and to the words that he speaks to us. Amen? Amen? Amen. Because he will bless you people along the way. Amen. No, he will bless you as you walk with him. He said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Amen? Amen. In verse 13 again, he says, Now I therefore I pray, if I have found grace in your sight, he says, Show me now your way that I may know you and that I might find grace in your sight and consider this nation is your people. And he says, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Amen. What a promise to know, people, that God is there. He said that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He said that he will always go before us. That not even that, that he would even send an angel before us to prepare that place people's hearts, souls, and minds. And as you go along the way, not knowing what to expect, but when you're walking with God, people, you're walking with God and you're not walking alone. Amen? Amen. 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 Is everybody awake here this morning? Yes. Yes. Huh? Is, are the, is, is the heater on? Because we can turn it off or turn the air back on. Amen? I see too many people getting a little too comfortable in here. Amen? But I want to go back and I want to talk, continue to talk about this favor of God and how God began to deal with people. Amen. Turn back over to the book of Genesis chapter 5. Amen. Amen. In the book of Genesis chapter 5, starting in verse 28, it says, Lamech lived 182 years old, and then he had a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, this is the one that will comfort us concerning our work and the toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord had cursed. Amen. 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 Now in chapter 6, starting in verse 1, Now it came to pass that when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw, no, that the, guns of, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, all of them whom they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, for he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be one hundred and twenty years, people. Wow. How many people know that God knows us? Amen. How many people know that God knows that we're flesh and we're carnal? Yes. Amen. And we still think with our own mind with our own hearts, to do whatever. You know that God has given us a choice to live the life that we want to live? That it's up to each and every one to live the way you want to? God's not going to twist your arm. God's not going to force His Word upon you, or even His grace or His favor. It's each to each and every one of you in here right now to live the life that you're living. I'm willing to live for the Lord. Amen? You know why? Because one of these days, people, one of these days, we're going to see the Lord face to face. Amen? One of these days, we're going to see the Lord face to face. We're all going to die. Everybody in this book, everybody that's in this book is dead. Not everybody went to heaven. Because there's a lot of people that went to hell. Guess what? Nothing has changed in life. 
There's a lot of people right now in hell. And there's a lot of people in heaven that are on their way to heaven. And I can say it this way, and there's a lot of people, there's a lot of people on their way to hell in a grease pole. Nothing's going to be able to stop them. Amen? See, but there's a lot of people in the body of Christ, and even pastors, won't talk this way. But i got to speak the truth to you guys in order for us to wake up. Yes, amen. To wake up to His Word, because His Word is truth. Amen? Amen. Amen? amen. amen. Verse 3 again, it says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive. Amen. It shall not strive with man forever. For he is in deep flesh, yet his day shall be 120 years. There were giants on this earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, they were, those were the mighty men who were old or men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. Amen. That means, people, that these people, aside from Noah, his wife, his three sons, and his daughter-in-law, think about this, people, the whole entire earth was walking, living, talking in wickedness. Every single day of their lives, people, these men and women, sons and daughters, I don't, I don't know how many people were living, but just think about it. Only eight people were living right in the sight of God. That is crazy, huh? Every single day, their intents of their hearts was just to do evil and to live in a wicked life. We can't even begin to think what they must have been doing. Everything under the sun. Anything and everything that was trying to satisfy their flesh and their carnal man. Every thought, everything in their heart. Oh my God, we can't even begin to think of all that. Think about everything that we've all been through before we came to Christ. Can you imagine if you never would have accepted Christ, where would you be right now? <laughs> Maybe some of you would have been dead by now. We don't know that. Amen? But aren't you grateful? Aren't you grateful that you came to Christ when you did? Amen. Huh? Aren't you grateful that you accepted that prayer on the day that you said, Yes, Lord? Huh? And it hasn't been an easy ride. It's not easy sometimes being a Christian. Amen? But I tell you what, if you submit to God, resist the devil, he will flee. But you're going to have to submit to God in order for the... In order for you to resist the devil, resist the devil every time he comes around. You will know when his head is popping out. You will know when those spirits are coming upon you or around you. And you know what? The devil can use anyone, anyone to distract you and to deceive you and mislead you from following God's ways. Yes. It could be your husband that's not saved. Or your wife or your daughters or your sons that are not walking with the Lord. Amen? And there's still family and you love your family. I love my family, but not all of them are walking with the Lord. And all I can do is pray and stand in the gap and intercede for them. Yes. Amen? Yes. I can't force them to, to surrender their lives to God. We have witnessed to all of them. Now it's up to them to do what they want to do. Amen? Amen? So we do have a choice in life, people. Amen? But think about everything that's going on right now. People are giving up on God. If people are giving up on God, God hasn't given up on us. Then why are we so easy to give up on the things of God? Why is it so easy for us to just to walk away and say, You know what? I'm not going to go to church anymore. I'm going to back into the world. I want to go back doing what I was doing. You're never going to be doing what you were doing before. You know why? Because seven more spirits are going to come on you. And you have no clue of what those seven spirits are going to do to you. You have no clue. You know that those spirits are waiting for you to walk away from God? That's right. That there has been a sign in order for you to walk away from God is crazy. Amen? Because we don't know when the Lord's going to come for us. We don't know when the Lord's going to take us up. Huh? Whether we die in carnality or, or the Lord takes us. We don't know when and where. We just know that one day we're going to stand before the Lord yes. and He is going to judge us, people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. 
Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man, verse 5, chapter 6 in Genesis. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on this earth, and he was grieved within his heart. Don't you know, people, that every time, people, that we choose to sin, huh? Yeah, because Christians do sin. Right? Yes. Come on, don't act like you're all that holy, people. There is no righteous man on this earth. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We all fall short from time to time. Amen? But there's going to be a time and a place, people, if the Holy Spirit does not convict you of what we're doing. And the Lord was sorry that He had made man on earth, and He was grieved within His heart. So the Lord says, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of this earth, both man and beast, creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. You know that God was getting ready to bless these people? You know that Adam and, Adam and Eve had it made, people. Yes. But look at what they did. They disobeyed God. Amen. He says, for I am sorry that I have made them. But verse 8, people, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. What does it take for the Lord to find grace in your sight? No, seriously, people, what does it take? Huh? Look, it, it may be hard sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't have to be that hard for people to continue to walk in the favor and the grace of God. Amen. It doesn't take much, people. It's like I told you, submit to God. Come under His authority. Come under His word. Come under His ways. See what God does. He will change your life, people. This word will impact your life like you have never been impacted before. It can change your livelihood. It can change your marriage. It can change your relationship with people. You know that God is getting ready to, to some, promote some people? How many people like to be promoted? Huh? How many people need a raise in their life right now? Seriously, how many people need more money? Not because you want it, but how many people need more money? <laughs> Look at all the hands that are going up. You continue to walk in the favor of God and His grace and be, and be obedient to His word and see what happens. Yes. I'm telling you people, the word works. We know my wife wasn't boasting about what God has done in our life. You think that we got to this place because it just happened overnight? Heck no. We've been walking with the Lord for 37 years. Guess what? Faithfully. We have never shrank back. We have never looked back. People were trying to pull us to the left and to the right. People were even trying to pull us back into the world. Huh. Forget about that. We already know who God is. I've had, oh my God, I've had interventions with God. I have it, I've had encounters with God. Now if God can show up in my life and He can make His self real in my life, why would I walk away from the hand that's feeding me? Amen. Huh? Why would I bite the hand that's feeding me? Amen. Huh? God has been good to us. Amen? And God has been good to this ministry. My God, people, it's like my wife says, when the head gets blessed, the body gets blessed. Amen. That's right. You know, and, 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 I, and I have to tell you all this, that when we walked into this place, we had nothing in here. We had nothing in here. There's only a few people that are left when we came into this place. But saw, see, but God saw us that we were faithful, even the little things when we were at the YMCA. When we were like this and like this, being cramped up pushed up against the wall with this, this, and that, not knowing when and where. And I took a step of faith. I went into prayer. I kept my faith in God. I kept my eyes on the Lord. I didn't listen to nobody. I had pastors, friends of mine, that told me the city will never give you a permit to open up that building. There's too many churches on Euclid. <laughs> and I said, what kind of God do you serve, brother? And these are pastors. 
trying to discourage me because they didn't want me to what? Come into their land? I came into the land and you know what happened? Then God took them out of the land. Seriously, people. Seriously. He pushed away two pastors away from our surroundings. And these are the two pastors that told me that I couldn't. And God took them away from the city. When I reached out to one, he said, Pastor Bob, he says, what do you need? Well, I need this, this, and this. Okay, let me know what you need. Guess what? The need never came. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I thank God that the need never came through them because God was the one that That's supplied. Right. Amen. 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 Right. Seriously. You guys have no clue about what God has done. His grace and His favor, and He wants to do that for all of you in your households. Huh? Your relationships with one another. <coughs> Amen? 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 I'm telling you, God has been so good. And he's a good God. He's a great God. And He's a giving God. He wants to bless you over and above, people. Amen? Just when we think we couldn't help anybody, we started helping people. Amen? You plant a seed, you receive a harvest. Yes. Amen. This is good ground. Yes. I'm telling you, it really is, people. I'm telling you, you guys have no clue. Amen. Amen. Seriously, everything, everything that we have in here. Mira, Linda. All this. <laughs> everything, Linda. I'm telling you, people. When you start walking right in His sight, and the favor begins, you're going to know. You're going to know when His grace is being poured upon you. You're going to know when the favor of God is being poured upon you. Because you know what? He begins to open up that window just a little bit more. Because if he was to open up the window as much as he wants to, this is why he said through his word in Malachi, you wouldn't be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. wow. So I'm glad that he did this a little bit. Every year we would prosper in this place. Every year we would do this. Every year, every year he kept doing this. Yes. And he would pour and he would pour. And we never abused the pouring or the blessing. Amen. We took it to heart and we began to build. Amen. 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 I'm telling you people, we're, this building is nothing compared to what God's going to do. Come on. Amen. 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 Guess what? He's also testing you guys too. Though. Right. Amen. Because you've got homes, you've got households, you've got needs in your life. Amen. Amen. It doesn't take much to plant a seed, people. Just plant it and walk away and let it grow. God is the one that's going to cause the growth. Amen. Amen. But in verse 8, it says, but Noah, but Noah, but Noah. Tell somebody, but Noah. Oh, my God, people. And that name means that he will bring comfort and rest into your life, people. Amen. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. In verse 9, it says, this is the family or the, the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. Amen. Amen. In other words, people, Noah was a man with no shame and no blame. Amen. Aren't you grateful that on the day that you said, Lord, you know that all that blame and all that shame and all the ugliness that we were doing, everything that we were doing that wasn't right, God took it away by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So don't go back. Don't go back trying to crucify the Lord again. Amen. We got to stay in the in the place where God has called us to be. Amen. And after he told Noah, gave him directions, what to build, how to build it. Amen. Then in, in Genesis 6 verse 22, this is one, a key verse for all of us people. It says, then thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. You know that it doesn't take much to be obedient to God? Huh? It doesn't take much. Why do we wrestle within ourselves? Why do we wrestle with one another? Why, Lord? Why, Lord? Why? Why? Because you have not died to self yet, people. Amen? You're still wrestling with things about things that I should be doing and I shouldn't be doing. And nobody's going to tell me when and where and how. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. 
<clears throat> Thus Noah did according to all that God had commanded him to do. Amen. And verse in chapter 8, I'm going to read one verse. Chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Then God remembered Noah. No, then God remembered Noah. Do you think that God doesn't remember who you are, yes. what you are, and what you've been through? Yeah. You know all the hell that Noah went through with the people around him? Yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. He said, what are you building? What is that? What is that? They didn't even know what it was. Because in those days it didn't rain. Not even Noah knew what he was building. <laughs> but he obeyed the Lord. Yeah. He was commanded by God to build an ark. Little did he know that he was going to be saving his himself and his wife and his three sons and daughter-in-laws. And every two of every kind. Amen? Amen? But he was willing, he was willing, he was willing to do what God told him to do. And this is why, this is why God was able to pour his grace upon Noah. He, this is why he was able to find favor with Noah. Yeah. Because God, oh my God, because Noah obeyed the Lord, people. Amen. I hope you guys are picking up on something Amen. here this morning. Amen. Amen. Because there is a lot of disobedient Christians in the body of Christ right now. There is. I know. We know some. Amen. Amen. They have one foot in, one foot out, and it's okay to take a little drink here and there. It's okay to drink a little wine. <laughs> Timothy said to, that he drank wine. The goose drank wine. The monkey got choked. <laughs> <laughs> On the street, Caroline, the line broke. <laughs> and they all went to heaven in a little rowboat. <laughs> Doesn't work that way, people. <laughs> Amen. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> Not even in my notes. See how quick we can go back to yesterday, people? Yes. Huh? But we're going to have to be at a place, people, within ourselves. Yeah. Look, don't worry about your husband or your wife or your wife. Don't worry about your husband, your sons and daughters. You yes. keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. 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 You keep your eyes on the Lord. Yes. Let God take care of them. Yes. They don't want to walk with God, then let them go. That's right. Let them go, people. We got family members that we need to let go. But I'm still praying for them, interceding for them, yes. standing in the gap yes. for them. Yes. Because sooner or later they're all going to come back. They're just out there in the wilderness somewhere. Yes. Amen? Amen? Thank you, Father. Then God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the animals that were with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters were what? subsided. See, there's going to come a time and a place, people, where the floods are going to go away. Amen. Where the floods Amen. are going to go away. Amen. 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 The storms will come. The thunder and the rains, the floods and everything will come, people. But sooner or later, it's all going to dry up and then you're going to be able to see what's in front of you. Amen. 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 And when you see, when you see that happening, when, you're, when you start seeing the favor of God, people, Man, I don't care how much favor he pours on you, don't let it go, people. Yeah. Because there's more to follow. Yeah. Amen? Amen? And sometimes we don't even know it because we're only thinking about today. Where's your faith, people? Amen? You live for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And God remembered Noah. Amen? So let me give you a couple of... Uh, golden nuggets here of what favor does people amen the favor of God let me tell you what the favor of God can bring into your life amen the favor of God brought forth what your salvation <coughs> it's by his grace that you have been saved and not that of yourself amen amen oh my god people sometimes we take all this for granted we yes. can't take this for granted we got to take this word for, for what it is, people. Look, it's in black and white and red. Amen. How many times does the word have to remind us of who this great God is? Amen. 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 So the favor of God brings forth your salvation. It teaches you. Don't you know that the grace of God teaches you how to forgive? Huh? And sometimes, people, when the hurt is so deep and the pain is so deep and it... And, 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 
and, and it brought forth a scar. And every time you see that scar, it reminds you about all the hurt and the pain that you went through. And sometimes it may not be visible. But the hurt is so deep inside here. It's still there, people. Yes. Amen. But you're going to have to learn. You're going to have to learn how to forgive from the heart. Because that's what grace is all about. If God can give up His only begotten Son for each and every one of us, where is the grace in us? No, where is the grace in us? Amen? Seriously, people, we've, we've seen one too many things happen in our lives. But we have to continue. As the senior pastor, my co-pastor, when people walk in here and walk away and they come back, we have to pour our... His grace upon them. We have to learn how to forgive. We have to learn how to forgive. But there's a lot of people that choose not to forgive because you hurt me so deep, man. I don't know if I can pour my favor on you. I don't know if I can even pray for you or stand in the gap for you anymore. But we got to do it, people, no matter what. Because, see, the enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy, to bring division, strive, and hate him. Oh, and everything that's under the sun that does not represent who God is. Amen? Amen? Because there's a lot of people in here that have been hurt. And you're probably still carrying that hurt. Listen to me, you guys. If the grace of God is in you, let it go. You'll never get ahead in life if you continue to hold on to all that baggage. Let it go, people. It's dirty laundry. And dirty laundry stinks. Thank you, Father. But it teaches you how to forgive. It teaches you how to walk in mercy. Oh, my God, people. That is one of the key words that people, Christians, born-again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, water-walking, blood-bought Christians should be walking in mercy. Sometimes we don't have mercy for one another. Sometimes you see your brother in Christ, automatically they fall and they stumble. All of a sudden you start pointing fingers at them. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know why they're at where they're at. Amen? Amen? But too many Christians aren't willing to pour their mercy upon them. We need to pick them up, people. No, we need to pick them up spiritually. And sometimes you might have to go to them and pray for them, be merciful to them. And it could be one of your own personal family members. That hurts, people. Amen? Amen. But see, this is where grace comes in. This is where the favor of God begins to pour out. Let me see if you are a Christian. Somos cristianos. Yes. How many Christians do we have in this place? Then you should be so full of grace, people. You may not like what you're going to have to do, but you know what? Once you do it, oh my God, it's like a relief. Amen. It's a relief. Yes. And sometimes you don't know how to face people anymore. Amen? But you're going to have to do it, people, no matter what. Guess what? We're going to be tested. No, all of us are going to be tested. Not only me. That's right. We're all going to be tested. We're going to have to give mercy to people. Amen? Amen. If God can be so merciful to us, right. and He gave you mercy, no te creas. <laughs> don't think you're all that, that you don't have to do the same. He only does it so you can do it to someone else. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Thank you, Father. So we're going to have to learn how to walk in mercy. Oh, this is a good one, people. How about a little bit of humbleness? <laughs> I'm going to ask Jennifer if she can make me some humble pie. Because <laughs> she's a great baker. She can bake. Have you got the recipe for humble pie, Jennifer? <laughs> you know what the recipe for humble pie is? Huh? The fruits of the Spirit. Well, you can pour a little bit of love and a little bit of joy. Oh, wait a minute. Let me pour more love into it. <laughs> Empty the whole jar of love and a little bit of joy and peace, long suffering, oh, long suffering. Right here. <laughs> Give me some more of that long suffering. Because I've been suffering so long, I don't know if I can take this no more. Amen. And a little bit of humbleness and kindness and mercy. Oh, wait a minute. 
Go bring me five gallons of self-control. Oh. <laughs> five gallons of self-control. Right. How many people have control over themselves? <laughs> well, well, wait a minute. Where's the grace in all this? Where's the favor of God in all this? Amen. That's the recipe, people. That's a recipe to humbleness. When you can really, truly say to yourself and to others that you're walking in the fruits of the Spirit, oh my God, people. How many times did they come and condemn and convict Jesus Christ? And not one time, not one time, not one time did he ever lash out at anybody. Huh? He could have called a legion of angels and wiped them all out. But he didn't. Because he had to prove the love of God in him and through him to show the people, this is what you must do. Amen? Amen. Oh, I hope this... <laughs> Amen? So the word, so the, God, so the favor of God brings forth comfort. How many people want to be at rest? Huh? How many people want to be at peace? Huh? You know what the ugly part, people, that when you wake up and you're still wrestling with issues of that took place, huh, what, 20 years ago? You're still holding on to those issues? Huh? Huh? How do you expect to be resting in the Lord? How do you expect to rest within yourself? How do you expect to go to bed at night and wake up in peace when you're still, all this junk is running through your mind, huh? You can't even concentrate no more. You can't even come and worship or praise the Lord. You can't even open up this book to see what God has to say because you're not at rest. You're uncomfortable. You, you, you. When do we apply the Word of God in our life? Huh? Uh, when there's a need? Is that the only time that you apply the Word of God? When there's a need in your life? Amen? Amen? It shouldn't be that way. Every day we should be in His Word. Don't you guys eat every day? Yeah. I don't see anybody that's losing weight in here. <laughs> Amen? Seriously. How many times do you open up this book? How many times do you really study for yourself? Don't wait till I do the studying for you. Huh? How many times do you read the Word of God? And let God speak to you. Amen. We got to stay in His Word. This is our map. This is our road map here, right here, people. Amen. This is your compass. Amen. You Amen. can't go wrong with this. Amen. 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 So we stand in grace. We grow in grace. And we shall inherit the grace. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. So let me give you a couple of people, and I've already shared this with all of you, because I know that I'm going to be ending this teaching here today. And I thank God for this series that I've been on, because it's taught me, too, some things about myself. And I hope it's taught you something about yourselves. Amen? We all know what happened to Enoch, right? Enoch walked with God. Enoch pleased God. And Enoch was taken up with God. And he never saw one pain of death in his life because he pleased God. No, well, because he pleased God. Amen. 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 And I just spoke to you about Noah. Noah came into this world to bring rest and comfort. And he was trying to, but the people didn't listen to him. Can you imagine if we would have had just maybe two other men? Anybody that would have came to help Noah build the ark, they too would have been saved and their families. Amen? Right. But they see there was too many people coming against Noah. What are you building? Why? Where? How big? And it took him 120 years, people. Wow. 120 years to build this ark. And you know that there was not one day, according to the Word of God, that Noah complained about anything. Or his wife. So where are you going today, Noah? I'm going back to the ark. Go ahead, babe. I'll have dinner ready for you when you come back. Not even his wife was complaining. 
He was working from sunup to sundown. And his three sons never complained about it because they were obedient to the father. Amen. And the daughter-in-laws were with a with a with a mother-in-law. Oh, la suegra! <laughs> oh my God! How many people have a suegra? Raise your hand if you have a mother-in-law. You better honor her just as you would your mother. Yes. Honor her. I don't care what you think has happened yesterday. You start pouring grace upon her, she's going to become your mama. He's your mama. Amen? And then Abraham. Oh my God, people. The things that God did with Abraham. Huh? Abraham believed in God. And because of his belief, he was called what? He was walking in righteousness. And he became a friend of God. To be a friend of God? You know that Abraham too never lacked? Huh? Abraham never lacked a single thing. You know what? That Abraham became one of the richest men in the Middle East? Yeah. Huh? People would come and bless him because they knew that he was a man of God. And they saw the goodness of God in him. And God was pouring his grace and his favor upon Abraham. See, you don't know when and where God is going to bring forth that blessing. Look, it's like my wife was sharing today about your tithes and your giving. You're not going to hurt us, us, if you don't give. You're hurting yourselves, people. You say that you're a servant of God? Be obedient to what the Word says. We're not choking you or, or, or pushing you up against a wall. You better tithe or you're out of here. <laughs> you better give something into that little black bucket. Or we're going to put you on a blacklist. <laughs> it doesn't work that way, people. Yeah. The Lord says to be what? A cheerful giver. Amen. Oh my God, people, to, to be happy about giving what belongs to God is one of the greatest. Man, I walk away from this place every month. I, I get paid once a month, people. And that's what I give back to God. That's what we give back to God. Amen? Amen. Then in between, God blesses we with more fruit. Amen. <laughs> Amen. One of these days, you guys are going to get it. No. No, one of these days, you're going to get it. Yes. Amen. Amen. No, besides God got it. No, you're going to get it. Amen. Even Moses. I've been speaking about Moses so much. You know that he's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Huh? Everything that this man went through, but still the favor of God was on him and his grace. You know that he was only disobedient one time and he never entered the land of milk and honey. Just one time. Mira, just one time. And he never entered the land of milk and honey. Guess what? The Lord took him to the mountain and he saw the land, but he never went in. The Lord told him to speak to the rock, and he struck the rock. For that one incident, Lord, you didn't have mercy on him? The man who stood out in the wilderness for 40 years with 2 million people complaining every single day? Resongando? Huh? Can you imagine coming home to your wife and all she does is complain as soon as you walk in? Huh? Or your husband complaining about your wife? Every day. Every day, all day. Oh my God. You wake up in the morning out of bed and you're complaining. You go to bed complaining. Oh my God, when does the complaining stop? But this man took it all in. He soaked it all in, people. Because guess what, people? He knew who his God was. And he was obedient to the Lord. Amen? And then the Lord took him away. I'd be one to leave two, two million complaining people. <laughs> Amen? Think about all the people in your home, in your household right now. Huh? Look at all the people that are complaining in your home. Huh? What are you complaining about? You got a roof over your head, you got some clothes on your back, you got some food in your belly. Right. Amen? 
What more do you want? But Lord, thank you, Father. Then you see Joshua, man. I love this servant, Joshua. He always stuck with the man of God, people. You know that Joshua was his armor bearer? You know that an armor bearer is not supposed to leave his post till death do you part? Huh? Armor bearers, once you are elected by the man or the woman of God to be an armor bearer, you're not supposed to leave that post. And too many people are leaving that post. Because why? Because they are disobedient and they don't want correction. You know that the armor bearer with uh, Saul, when he fell on the sword, he fell on the sword too? See, too many people just want the title, but they don't want to have to go through it. Amen? But Joshua was obedient. He waited on the man of God, not knowing that one day that the same favor, the same favor and the grace that was poured on Moses came on Joshua. Because the Lord told him, now my servant Moses is dead. Now it's your turn. But whatever you do, Joshua, be strong and courageous. Don't look to the left or to the right. Meditate in my word day and night. And everything and everywhere that you go, I will even cause your hands to prosper. And everywhere the soles of your foot, yes. feet, all walk upon, it shall be yours. Amen. Why? Because he was obedient. To the man of God. Amen? Amen. And there's too many disobedient Christians in the man, in the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Word of God says that Nehemiah, when he heard the bad news, how many people have ever received bad news? You know, as soon as we receive bad news, that we take it to heart, we forget about, it. hey, what about prayer? What about fasting? Huh? And Nehemiah interceded for his people. Because he was in captivity over here in Jerusalem, was over here, and the walls were broken, the gates were burned. And he heard the bad news. As soon as he heard the bad news, what did he do? He went into fasting and prayer. Amen? And right after fasting and prayer, months later, the king saw him. He said, why do you look the way you look? He says, if you only knew what was going on back home, the gates are burning, the walls are down. All of a sudden, the Spirit of God just came into that king and gave Nehemiah favor. And guess what? Nehemiah was just a cupbearer. He wasn't a block layer or a carpenter or anything like that. He didn't know anything about construction. But you know that God blessed Nehemiah in his mind and he opened up his mind to do all these things? Then he chose other men, and the Spirit of God came into them, and they began to build. Huh? Some were building, and some were standing with the sword. And every time that Nehemiah was ready to do something else, here comes the Tobias. Here come the Sambalots, coming against him. In every way. You'll always have those kind of people in your pathway when you are trying to walk with God. Amen? 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 Amen. Amen. But then God blessed Nehemiah. Everything that he did, he accomplished in 52 days, people. Amen. In 52 days, he rebuilt everything that was destroyed. Amen? Amen. What a blessing, people. Yes. Daniel found favor with God. Highly favored man of God, the angel called him. Are you talking to me? <laughs> this man was in prayer three times a day. He didn't care who watched him, who heard him pray. He knew who his God was. Amen. And look at everything that God did with Daniel. Right. Even when they threw him into the lion's den. Right. Even God saved him and pulled him out. Right. And the men who accused him of praying, they got thrown into the den and they were devout. Amen. And then God brought him up. They put a gold necklace around him. He became second in command. Oh my God, people. The favor of God just by being obedient to the word and his 
I hope you guys are picking up on something that God is saying here. Amen. Amen. Seriously, people, don't you know that the Word of God can change your life? Come on, amen. Huh? That's right. Seriously, people, the Word, by applying the Word, living the Word, and walking and talking amen. in the Word, it will change your life amen. dramatically, amen. people. Amen. Listen to me, you guys. I don't deserve to be behind this pulpit. Maybe my wife will, or she. Not me. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I shouldn't be here. I shouldn't be standing behind this pulpit. But I tell you what, once you surrender your life to God, and you start walking with Him, and He puts you on this pathway, oh my God, people, if you only knew. But see, God sees your heart, people. God knows what's inside of you. God knows the calling that's in you. Amen. Amen. Don't get me wrong, people. I was afraid to stand behind the pulpit for the first time. I was sweating bullets. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, I, I used to hate to read. I never read. And now I can't get out of this book. Because God speaks to me every time that I open up this book. He is speaking to me. Because I have an, I have had an encounter with God, you know, a true encounter. I'm not just saying this to say it, but I have had an encounter with God, and I know who this God is. Amen. And I don't care what weapon forms against me, and anything that's trying to prosper against me, it ain't gonna work, people. It ain't gonna work. For greater is he who is in me. Amen. There's something great in us, people. And you have to run with that greatness. You run with that greatness because you're a great people, because he's a great God. Amen. My God, people, we're so full of grace that we don't even know it that we're so full of grace. We have so much favor in God, but you're not using it. You're not using it. Amen. 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 Look at Ruth. No, I'm going to finish this. Look at Ruth. Oh, my God. She was willing to give up anything and everything to follow her suegra, her mother-in-law, all the way back to her hometown. She didn't know anything about this God that, that Naomi knew. But when she made confession, oh, my God, people. When Ruth made confession and she gave up her rights and she became what Naomi was, he says, your God will be my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. No, your God will be my God. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you sleep, I will sleep. Whatever you eat, I will eat. But whatever you do, don't tell me to walk away from you. You know that the Word of God says that she clung onto her and she wrapped her arms around her and she wouldn't let her go? Huh? And two, two widows walked back to the wilderness. And all this time, the Lord was leading them. Amen. Not knowing what light ahead for Ruth. Ruth didn't even know it. Naomi didn't even know it. But when she got there, she found her Boaz people. <laughs> she found her Boaz people like you would never believe. Amen. Amen. The Word of God says that even Ruth began to question Boaz. Why have you found favor in me? He says, because I see what you have done with your mother-in-law, Naomi. How you gave up your own rights to follow her. And there's talk in the town about who you are. I hope you guys pick up on that one. There's talk in the town about who you are. Amen. I'll tell you what, people. And then when they came and they came and told Esther about, about Haman, what he was about to do to destroy the Jews, amen, Mordecai came and told me, don't you know that you've been chosen for such a time as this, huh? And then you know what she told him? He says, go and tell my people to go and pray and fast for three days. After the third day, she was ready to stand before the king. And God found favor with Esther. Yeah. 
And she saved a whole nation just by three days of prayer and fasting. And God poured his favor upon her. Amen. Amen. That's the grace of God, people. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 I'm going to end with this. Go over to the book of Hebrews. <clears throat> Amen. It's so important that I read this to you guys. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, starting in verse 26. Amen. How many people are, are ready to receive? Amen. 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 In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, starting in verse 26. Are you there? Yeah. Is everybody there? Yeah. Hebrews 10, 26, it says, For if we, he's talking about everybody in this place. Amen. Are you guys paying attention? Yes. Yes. Tell somebody we. we. For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Think about that, people. For if we sin willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth. Amen. How many people know what's right and wrong in this place? Amen. How many people know what's truth and a lie? Amen. How many people know what's black and white? Amen. How many people know what's up and down? Amen. We all know that. See? So if you know that you know that you know the truth, then why would you want to walk away from the truth? Why would you want to walk away from the truth? And I'm talking to all of us in here as believers. Why would you want to walk away from the truth if the truth is in you? No, the truth is in you. Because Jesus says, I am the way and the truth. He's in you. The truth of God should be in you. Don't you know that everything that spits out of your mouth comes out of your heart? For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Verse 27, people, oh my God. But a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. We have to be so careful, people, of what we're saying or doing. Amen. Amen. Let me share this with all of you. If you have the peace of God that's in you, and you know that you know, okay, that you're right standing in the sight of God, but if somebody comes to accuse you of something that is not of God, that's not God. Because as long as you know that you know that you know that you're at peace with God, and the peace is in you, and you know that you know that you're doing what is right, Nobody can, anybody can blame you, anybody can shame you, anybody can condemn you, convict you, point the finger at you. Doesn't matter what they do to you. But as long as you remain in the peace of God and you know that you're at rest. I don't care what they say. I don't care how many times they slap you around. Amen. All of that does not matter anymore, people. As long as you know that you know that you know that you know that you're at peace with God. Yes. Amen. 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 It says, anyone who has rejected Moses, laws dies. There it comes, Moses again. Anyone who has rejected Moses, law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Amen. See, back then, people, if two people came against you, and there was plotting and planning, was conspiracy behind it. And if two people come against you, even though you were innocent, you were guilty. You were guilty. Because that's all it used to take back then. Amen? Look at how many times all of us, all of us have done something that was not right. Amen? And through the mercies of God, God has forgiven us, people. Look, you don't have to go into a little dark room and make confession to the priest anymore. <laughs> Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been, what, 20 years since I've been to confession. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go say 10 Hail Marys, 3 Our Fathers, the Act of Contrition, and, sign, and, and light up 7-day seven, seven candles anymore. Right. 
All you have to do is go before the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry. I blew it. I blew it, Lord. I blew it. Hey, on spirit field, I blew it. I'm born again. I blew it. I made a mistake, Lord. Forgive me. And that quick, as quick as you sin, that's how quick God can forgive you. Because of His mercies. Amen? Amen. Amen. Anyone who has rejected Moses lost dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Or how much worse punishment do you suppose? Do you suppose will he be thought of worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot, counted it the blood of the covenant by which he sanctified a common thing, and what? Insulted the Spirit of grace? No, insulted the Spirit of grace? You know that every time we go out and do what we want to do, and if it's not right in the sight of God, you're insulting the grace of God. That's what it's telling you right here. You're insulting the spirit of grace. And grace is a gift that God has given us. Yes. Why would you want to misuse this gift that God has given us? Mm. Amen? Amen? He says, For we know who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge His people. So don't worry about anybody anymore, people. Yeah. Just let it go and let God. God will judge them. Yeah. No, God will judge them for who yeah. they are and what they are and what they're saying or doing, people. Right. Amen? Amen? The Lord says, vengeance is mine. Don't take it upon yourselves to go out there and try to correct it. That's right. Amen? Amen? God will fix it. Yes. Amen? Amen? And verse 31, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God, people. God's not dead, people. Mm -hmm. God is alive. He's very alive. Yeah. In fact, He's more alive than all of us here put together. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. Let me finish with this so we can leave. Amen. It says, It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. He says, But recall the former days in which you were illuminated. You endured great struggles with sufferings, partly while you were made expectable. He says, both by reproaches and tribulations and partly while you became companions of those who were so treated. For you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted it. The plundering of your goods, know that you have a better and enduring possession of yourselves in heaven. Amen. Therefore, it says, do not cast away your confidence, which has what? A great reward. Amen. 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 So I hope that today, people, you got something out of this. Amen. I know that every week that I've been reading this and going back in the verses and the scriptures and the chapters from the old to the new, God has been waking me up spiritually to know more about who He is and what He is. Amen. 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 So I hope that this morning you guys receive what the Word of God has to say. Amen. You want the favor of God? Walk in the favor of God. Walk in the favor of God.